Joining us today is band leader, musician, percussionist, and son of the late Mambo King himself. We have Tito Puente Jr. Tito, you're in the house with me today. Well, not yes, literally. Yes, I am. <laughs> Quarantito, they call me. Quarantito, there it is. <laughs> nice to be here with you, Mabel. Tito, it is such a pleasure talking to you. Um, you're in Florida, but yet you're representing New York. I got to represent my New York Yankees. I love them with all my heart. I miss baseball. It's ba We're right in the middle of baseball season, and we don't have any baseball. So I, I'm just tributing my favorite team today and, and thinking about them, how I can personally see and uh, see those balls being – hit right out of the outfield area and them winning <laughs> so I can only dream about it but yes I am originally from New York but I'm in South Florida but they train over here so and we got a uh, my man Derek Jeter who lives down here in South Florida too <laughs> oh nice so how are you doing in quarantine how's your family how are you I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm right in the smack in the middle, right when the quarantine kind of came in, of recording my third uh, tribute album to my late father, Tito Puente. And uh, so I'm right in the middle. I got seven songs done. I'm supposed to complete 10. So I got three more on deck. And I believe I spoke to the producer last night. So I'm looking forward to getting in the studio, hopefully soon. And what's great about being in a recording studio is that you're really not in close proximity to anybody, simply because you're in a vocal booth or a booth where you can play the instrument and of course the the engineer and producers are in another room looking through a window so it's how ideal is that to be quarantined um so i'm going to start getting back in the studio hopefully and uh finish this thing up because it's the 20th anniversary of my late father's passing this uh may 31st 2000 and uh hopefully i'll have a single ready by then that your creative juices are flowing even more so during quarantine? Or are you one of those individuals that you're like, you know what, I'm in lockdown, I'm just gonna relax? <laughs> it depends, it depends on, uh, it depends on what daily routine I'm doing that particular day. I do homeschooling, of course, I I'm sure all the parents out there have the homeschooling. My kids are in class right now, as we speak. Um, so I kind of, kind of guide them to, to do their, their classwork uh, through, through their teachers. Um, but then after, after school's over, I uh, get into looking at a lot of music videos and a lot of uh, historical videos of my late father. And that's where my creative juices come from, his spirit, his spirituality, and of course his influence of music worldwide, just the mambo music that he left on this planet. So I am getting some things done around the house too as well. <laughs> had a lot of chores to do, I didn't realize I had so many. <laughs> but yeah, getting those two too. But I'm getting through it pretty good. And uh, here in South Florida, it looks like the curve of, uh, is coming down a little bit. We're seeing less cases of COVID-19. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopefully this thing, you know, being flushed out of the area or if out of the United States or out of the world for that matter. Um, it's just a, a devastating what happened to all of the working musicians around the world, especially the entertainment industry. It got hit the most and we'll probably be the last to come back from this whole, you know, pandemic. But um, I have my hopes up and I'm looking forward to getting music. And that's the greatest thing about it, Mabel, is that music has gotten everybody, every single person on this planet has gotten through this pandemic with, with uh, resilience and shine and feeling good because there's music and there's music videos and there's and the musicians and and uh, I've seen just people dancing on different platforms and Snapchat and TikTok and YouTube and all over the place and they're all dancing to mambo music and any type of music any genre so music's really gotten everybody through this whole pandemic I'm sure you've listened to music most of your day you don't even realize it but music comes in and out of every platform that we have been um, seeing including television uh, as well and uh, i'm glad that my father's music has gotten people through this hard time it gives people good spirit and i encourage everybody each and every day to listen to a tito puente cd or listen to tito puente music and i promise you they will go by much smoother so. i completely agree i have found myself vacuuming to, to music <laughs> <laughs> that's good much more enjoyable that's for sure 
Yes, it does. And it makes you dance. It makes you groove. And always up-tempo music is, is fantastic. Even ballads and, 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 and great songs. And I, I love the fact that music has gotten people through this pandemic. And my father's music, Tito Puente music, really shines and comes through. I'm seeing some great, great uh, dancers around the world, which is incredible. Well, I recently saw, uh, I happened to be on Facebook, and you, you were live, and there were some mentions of you, that there was a DJ that was uh, mixing some of your music. And I thought that was great. And that's exactly what's been happening. A lot of people have been listening to DJs online. I love the fact that the DJs are playing great, great music, uh, all different, different types of music, different genres, and uh, the people are watching. And I think it's because it gives a, a sense of um, normalcy in the fact that you're seeing a DJ and you're relating to the music and they're always coming up. And you can even request, like in real time, you can request a song that you like to hear. But I love the fact that they're playing a lot of uh, my music and my father's music and a lot of uh, Fania music and just Latin music all together. And what's even... Uh, more fascinating is I'm seeing actual musicians performing on um, on different platforms too as well, playing drums, timbales, conga, bongo. They're all coming together for the you know the the unity of music, and it's just a fantastic. It's, I think we all kind of needed a break for a second too. I think we we're all going at about a hundred thousand miles an hour uh, when we all went into 2020. I think we all said the same thing. 2020 is our year. Huh? So this is a great time to reflect and turn around and say, hey, you know what, uh, uh, what the things that are important to us. And uh, me, I didn't realize how much limited time that I had to spend with my children since I, being a Latin performer and performing around the world, I was gone every weekend for a whole year. So that's 52 weekends that I didn't have with my kids. And I said, wow, you know, performing and of course working, but um, I miss it. Yes, but, and I love what I do, but it feels great to be home with my children and bonding with them and, and spending quality time. So I take this as a reflection of um, what's the things to come and how I can um, be a better father, be a better uh, parent, and just be a better friend to all my friends, too. So I keep in touch with a lot of friends that I haven't spoken to in a while. So, so it's a great, great time to reflect on that. No, I completely agree, because otherwise we're just, we're going about our business. Like you said, it's like 100 miles per hour, and you lose sight of everything that's going on around you. So this is a, a, the perfect time. Truthfully, if we weren't in quarantine, we may, this may not be happening. Either I would That's be true. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the schedule, it would be a scheduling conflict, but now we have the availability, and I love that, and I've been... Uh, contacting people that I didn't ever thought I haven't spoken to in years and I'm like wow they're available now and I'm finally returning voicemails that I had for about a year and a half and I'm like oh my god let me call this guy I feel so bad and they're like you're still alive <laughs> so uh, it's a great opportunity to do that and share share those uh, great aspects of life you know those are parts of life that we usually don't share and I'm glad we get the opportunity to do that now absolutely so you yeah. mentioned that um it's going to be the anniversary of your dad's passing and you're working on a particular project. In the last few years, you've been working on a number of different projects. Can you share a little bit more about that? I have quite a few uh, things that I've been doing. Um, again, going a hundred miles an hour, that there's this, I had a, like a board that I put up, you know, like some, some people have to put down a, um, a chalkboard, if you will, and say, okay, uh, these are my goals and this is what I'm doing. And uh, last month or the month before, I just took it and I erased everything. And I said, let me start with a clear mind and uh, go into the projects that are near and dear to my heart and the ones that I was really not focusing on. And uh, one of them is my album, of course, and I've been working on that for a while. I've been trying to actually do this album for about, uh, about six years uh, my last album came out in 2010, so now I'm really focused on this one. This is a great 20th anniversary tribute. I wanted to get it out by by May 31st. However, uh, just time constraint, and of course, the pandemic kind of pushed it, but it will be out before the end of the year. And the other project that I'm looking forward to doing is hopefully, <laughs> and I'm crossing my fingers and, and really uh, uh, rubbing that, that crystal ball and hopefully and praying that their story will be told on my lay father, possibly a book or a movie or a television series on the great Tito Puente. Um, really something true to my heart. And that's something I've been working on for over 20 years since his passing. And it's finally coming to fruition. I see some great things happening soon. I'll share them with you as they come uh, forth, but um, a very exciting time. Uh, you would never believe it during the pandemic that some of the greatest uh, moments of my career are happening as we speak. So very, very exciting time for me. 
Tito, I don't know. Have you noticed anything different during our interview in the last few minutes? Um, I'm going to say I'm looking at your, <laughs> I think you're smiling. Are, are you smiling there? <laughs> <laughs> talking to me about some of your projects I, yes i wanted to surprise you so i okay have, melina does that sound familiar hey that's my musical sister <laughs> yeah hey, hey what's up here i am girl? again to bother you <laughs> Mira pa ahí, mi hermana boricua musical melina almodoval la muñeca de la salsa the doll of salsa how are you gorgeous Good, how are you? Surprise! Surprise, <laughs> how are you? How are you? Man, I saw you making a good penil the other night. How'd it come yeah. out? Yeah, everything's <laughs> going good. I miss you though, and thanks to Mabel for calling me. It was a total surprise, so I hope uh, that you are surprised. I am, surprised? I am surprised. I am surprised. Good to see you. I talk to you practically every week anyway, just <laughs> to check up on you. But, we uh, talk all the time. I know, but I'm glad Mabel reached out to you. This is great. Thanks, Mabel, for, for bringing my musical sister into here. This is cool. Woo! How are you, Mabel? You were with me when I when I the Yankee game, girl. She performed at Yankee Stadium with me. Remember that? Yes, it was amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to do it again if we ever get That's, to do it again. <laughs> oh, baby, we're going to do it. Yan the Yankees are going to come back strong, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Mal Mabel, Mabel, Melina performed with me at Yankee Stadium, one of the... One of my dreams that came true, and I'm glad I got to do it with Melina. And, and we've done some fantastic concerts. We have been going 100,000 miles an hour for about good three and a half years strong mm -hmm. ever since our single came out. And every weekend, practically, because I was looking yeah. at a calendar, I'm like, wow, man, we worked a lot. Especially yeah. last year. You know, 2019 was really a, a, a hard year that we were on the road a lot and Melina just kept up with me which I'm very happy to say and she's just a fantastic I'm artist. To live the tale. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can't wait till your book comes out, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, so I want that's to thank cool. Mabel for having me. Thank you, Mabel. Thank you very much. Thank you enough. We have Melina Almodovar and uh salsa great as well. You know, you Latin uh Oh, I'm trying to think what's the best way, uh -huh. vocalist and artist and just yeah. great talent. And I thank you so much for helping me pull off this uh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Oh, that was, I am very surprised, and I'm thank, thank you again, Mabel. She's, uh, uh, I love getting surprises like that when it's beautiful girls like Melina. She's such a talent. I love working with her. Um, you know, I try to do my best to, to keep in touch with her as much as I can because we were recording, and she's going to be on my new album, too, as well. And we've been going back and forth, and I've been keeping her in the loop on when we're going to get back in the studio. But I love the fact that Melina and I, um, we had a lot of concerts that have not been canceled, just postponed. And I try to tell her that, and I explain that to her a lot, that um, we're not canceled out, baby, whatsoever. We have more music to do, and we are just going to let this quarantine uh, just keep moving forward, and hopefully a vaccine will be created, and everybody will come back on the dance floor. And I'm very excited. Remember, everybody, one more day is one day closer to it be coming back to the way it was. And we're yep. hoping and praying that that'll be sooner than later. And I see good progress. So I'm happy to say that. But I love the fact that you surprised me. And uh, Melina, I hope you saved me some of that bad news. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been cooking online. And next week, I'm going to make this awesome pastelon. I'm so excited. I've been, I have to keep myself busy, right? We have to keep our, ourselves busy. Yeah, um, yeah. And I talked to, actually, Mabel, when, when you actually texted me, I was talking to Tito. I was like, Oh, yeah. hey, I was talking to him yeah. talk on Facebook all the time. That's how we, um, yeah. so I was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, Mabel, I got to tell you, it's funny too, because Melina and I are practically neighbors. She lives in South Florida as well. 
and we we see each other so much, but in the past uh, th three months already, um, we have not seen each other practically at all, only through this platform. Yeah. And uh, it, it's nice to see that she's uh, doing great, and she does this great thing on Friday nights tomorrow, and uh, she performs live on her Facebook feed. So anybody who's watching, make sure you watch my homegirl, La Muñeca de la Salsa. She mm -hmm. takes requests on YouTube, on Facebook, and follow her, Melina Motivar. Uh, Thank no, you Facebook. for having me. Oh, yeah. to it. I'll be tuning in. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, you got to have some wine and dance yes, and get your dancing shoes on. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Tomorrow we'll be doing, you know, everybody always asks me to play me socio. But for me, it's really hard because I can't do me socio and Kimbara and all those songs without Tito. So I try not to do him too much because I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm like, where's Tito at? I'm like, I'm like looking at him. <laughs> you know, constantly to see if he's there. So I miss you very much. And thank you, Mabel, for the opportunity to be on this wonderful interview. Um, you guys have a good time for the rest of the interview. I just popped in. Yeah. I'm going to pop yeah. out. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love you. God bless you, darling. We'll talk soon. I'll call you later. All right. See you, Mabel. We'll thank laters. you so much. Man, fantastic. Oh, perfect. That was so cool. Thanks, Mabel. That was a nice gift. I thought you would enjoy that. I'm, I'm trying to. It's the, the gift that keeps on giving. And it's like during this time, we just need to smile. <laughs> yeah. She it's makes cool. me smile all the time. And she's right. I can't perform these songs without her because we, we're a team. And uh, I love performing with her around the world. And uh, I can't wait to get back, on, on, back out on stage with Melina. She's a fantastic artist. And, and again, what a fantastic surprise. I love, I love uh, chatting with her. And uh, really someone special, dear to my heart, dear to my family. Uh, we all love her. And uh, hopefully we will see you guys in concert soon. We got some great tour dates coming up too. And I told, I told Melina that um, in September we got some concert dates coming up in October too. And uh, I always got to throw these dates at her. And she's like, wait, when, when? I'm like, I need you. I need you to come here and there. And, and I love that, that she's always readily available for me. And uh, she's a... Uh, really a force to be reckoned with. She's got a powerful voice and, uh, and I appreciate her friendship. And again, fantastic uh, opportunity to chat with her. And it's so funny that she was with me when I got this shirt from the Yankees. <laughs> she was right there with me though. Good During stuff. The quarantine, you mentioned, you know, September, October. So are, is that more or less, you know, when you're talking to, you know, your, your group of people about, you know, just concerts and things, is that what it seems like around that time frame? I've been listening to a lot of different um, promoters um, that are in the Latin market and, of course, the American market, too. And um, they're coming together and kind of come up with some sort of uh, way we can move forward into having the live, you know, presentations. Um, I've heard the whole thing of the drive-in movie theater, having the stage, and, um, of course, the virtual sh uh, concerts that uh, everybody's doing. Um, Puente music, my music in particular, it's danceable music. You need a dance floor. Um, sometimes I'll do performing art centers where people can actually sit, but they'll have to be, of course, six feet separation, social distancing, and they can experience a concert in that sort of way. But in September and October, I'm really pushing for that. I'm hoping, you know, um, everything all, all depends on what the government's going to acquire, and, and hopefully we get a vaccine coming through sooner than later. I think that's really the key to all of this. It's up to the scientists, and I support all the scientists. But in the meantime, what we can do as musicians is just help out the ones that are in need, whether it be families or or or, or uh, the front you know, people on the front lines. You know, uh, hospital workers, uh, nurses, police, fire, emergency uh, workers, and uh, uh, I hope that that they are the ones that really they have to. Hold down the fort until the scientists come up with a vaccine, and then we can relieve them of their duties. And they're really doing a fantastic job. So my support is always with them uh, when this whole pandemic. I'm praying and hoping that September, October, this uh, the curve will go down dramatically, and we can maybe uh, do some small, intimate shows 
where we can have just a few people at a time and uh, maybe use do those virtually too. There's so many different combinations that we could ba basically do with, lat with live music. But in particular, me, I like performing for uh, un, 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 uh, la gente en vivo, as we say in Spanish, the people live. And uh, I think my father would have, uh, if he was with us, he would do the same too. It would be very hard to play drums virtually. I did a couple of concerts, a couple of presentations like that, but um, I have such a vast catalog and my concerts usually go for two or three hours and uh, it's very, you know, interactive, if you will. So um, hopefully September, October, we're shooting for that. If not, then we're looking at 2021, but uh, I'll still be here and I'll be ready to go. Will you be in the New York area? Of course, of course, absolutely. New York is my home, and uh, I have I have a concert coming up in November, November fourteenth in upstate New York in Newburgh, and then I have another concert I think in New York City. Um, I'm hoping and praying, with, you know, that the the nightclub will uh, eventually open up for small patrons, maybe a few patrons at a time. You know, dance classes and dance uh, um, gyms of that nature, the things that, uh, dance studios, um, those are really gonna be the first ones that are gonna open up first, and then the live music will come in with small quartets. I don't think I can come in with a big orchestra and have, you know, 300, 400 people at one time. Um, but eventually I'll do like a little small Latin jazz ensemble. Of course, Melina and myself, we could do a lot of performances, just me and her. And um, we're going to start off slow like that and get the people's, uh, basically the trust of the scientists that we have to rely on. We got, that's really where we're at. I mean, anybody could tell you, well, I had COVID, but I don't have it anymore. And then the next person could say, well, I never got it. So you don't know where, where, where to believe or where to go. So I think if everybody has a vaccine or everybody gets vaccinated, then we won't have that, that, that um, doubt in our minds anymore of, shaking a hand or greeting somebody. So we're Latinos, so we're so used to hugging and kissing and, hey, how you doing, como pa mi gente, you know? And eventually we'll get back to there. Just right now it's a temporary stay, <laughs> stay of uh, love and uh, with a public displays of affection, is that what they call it? <laughs> so we just have to hold on to that. In the meantime, we can keep cooking Goya and, and that, that's how we'll send our love through smell. <laughs> I can completely relate, but it's true. We're huggers, and I had a, a relative came by on Mother's Day to give my mom some flowers with the mask. She didn't come in, and I, I wanted a hugger, and so I, I had to, like, really resist, and I'm like, okay, mental hug. <laughs> yeah. Know, a few feet away from me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I kind of got, I had to hug myself, and I said, this hug is for you. <laughs> you know, so uh, that, but we, we are resilient people. Latinos are always will be. And uh, we, we will eventually get back to uh, some sort of normalcy in the, the Hispanic community, especially the, the musical Hispanic community with Latin music. So You're I'm just excited. as a, a band leader, percussionist, um, some people refer to you as the son of the late Mambo King. And you really have taken it upon yourself to really continue your dad's legacy. Was that done? consciously like was that something that you felt you wanted to do uh absolutely um uh, before his passing i was doing latin dance music i have a lot of recordings um i redid one of his famous signature standard hits called oye como va mm -hmm. and i was recording uh back in uh, 1993 94 95 so this is prior to his passing and i traveled around the world with him it was a great experience being the son of a Latin icon like that. And I always wanted to do something now, especially at the age of 50 years old, I, I, I continue to make sure that the youth of today recuerda, reconocer la música de Rey de to remember Tito Puente music and where the Latin music comes from. The likes of Celia Cruz, Johnny Pacheco, Fania All-Stars, Machito, Tito Rodriguez, Tito Puente. These are legends that can never be forgotten because they really paved the way for us musicians and Latin music in, in its entirety. Uh, I tell everybody I'm not really Enrique Iglesia <laughs> because, you know, they kind of, the comparison is so vast from Julio to Enrique. Um, I would used to do, I used to perform rock music and Latin dance music. My father was not into that music at all. And uh, he was into jazz. But he never taught me how to play drums. He always told me, go to school, learn the craft, and make sure that you watch and listen to what I do and try to follow those traits and 
I, that's the magic that I give to the world. And I've taken that, embraced it into my own heart, embraced it into my own performances, and I uh, present his music to the highest maximum way that I can, through the original arrangements. And I love performing his music. I love keeping his his spirit alive. And they say I look a lot like him, just no white hair yet, <laughs> no gray hair yet. But um, I always keep him close to me. I always got his music everywhere. <laughs> I got his... Um, I keep I keep uh, his a lot of his yeah I keep a lot of his uh, his memorabilia and I keep his his memory alive by performing. This is a classic. Oh, hey, he looks young here, right? Pretty young. Yeah. You can he put a lot of money on eBay. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I find a lot of stuff. I always look for a lot of memorabilia and things like that of my late father. In order, to, I, I I like getting it and then keeping it. I don't resell any of my father's stuff or any of his music or anything like that because uh, um, hopefully one day I'll make a museum and kids can go and the youth can go to remember who he was. So I feel almost as a, almost like a, a son being a curator of the Tito Puente dynasty and his legacy. I love I love performing his music and I'm glad I get the opportunity to. So. You mentioned that you are working on an, on, on an album and that you have about se seven songs done. And yes. And so waiting to get production started again. When do you think it will be released? I'm going to say before the end of the year because it is the 20th anniversary of his passing this year. So we want to celebrate his life and his legacy as much as we can, even during this pandemic. However, um, I believe I just the, the, the issue, my thing is that I don't need to get the musicians in the studio simply because I can record them on tracks. You can record one saxophone, one trombone the next day, a trumpet the next day. It's the other featured celebrity musicians I have. I can share with you um, the special guests that I have on the album, one of them being my brother. My brother, Ronnie Puente, is performing on a beautiful song written and composed by Tito Puente from 1957 called Hong Kong Mambo. And he's playing the vibes, and then, and then I'm playing the timbala. So it's our, you know, our son tribute to our father. And um, I have uh, the fantastic Giovanni Hidalgo that will be participating in the album. I got some other great, great singers that my father used to work with. And I wanted to get singers and performers that worked with Tito Puente directly. Remember, my father worked with so many different fantastic artists. But I wanted to get the ones that really uh, were on his albums, and he shared recording studio time with them. And so I'm looking forward to working with those fantastic artists. I have a few in mind. They're all ready to go. I just got to get this over so I can get to them. And But now we can even send the music out, and they can record uh, on their own, which is fantastic too. But uh, their their contribution to this beautiful 20th anniversary tribute to the Eco Puente record will be undeniably something special and people will recognize it. And uh, again, uh, hopefully it will be out before the end of this year. I'm actually counting on it to be done before the end of the summer. So I'm looking forward for a fall release, third quarter they call it in the, in the music world. So uh, look out for it. It's going to be something fantastic. I'm so excited for you. Yeah. It's lovely to, to just see that, that beautiful demeanor of yours, that personality. I know that you began to mention, right before we had our, our surprise with Melina, um, you mentioned, and I, you and I talked a, a number of years ago, and it was something you mentioned at that time, that you would love to do a film, a film about your dad. Yes. Um, I would love that. It looks like it's going to hopefully happen. Um, I think with the whole recognition of the 20th anniversary, plus my album, plus uh, uh, people dancing in this pandemic of Tito Puente, his name is getting out there a little bit more. I do, Just look at any hashtag on any of the social platforms and type in Tito Puente on Google and you're going to see a million things come up. So his name is recognition. People are recognizing his music. Ranta all the great hits and the fantastic legacy that he left I think he's getting more recognition now than he ever had in the past 20 years since his passing so I believe that Hollywood uh, there are now looking for stories that should be told. One of the most fantastic ones that I just recently saw as of late was, of course, uh, the one about Elton John, which is Rocket Man, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the one about Queen. There's some fantastic, great biopics. And now there is, hasn't really been a powerful biopic on a Latin icon, a jazz legend, such as my father. And I'm not sure if we could really do a movie 
Um, I'm almost prone to say this might have to be a saga series, maybe on a streaming network, simply because his career was so vast. Right. You can't stick it all in two hours. You know, Tito Puente had from Homo Beginnings of Spanish Harlem and then winning seven Grammy Awards, 14 nominations, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You have to add all that into the Sancocho, the movie, and it's going to be kind of tricky. So hopefully maybe uh, one of the, the streaming services or maybe even a network will do a, just, uh, you know, a series on Tito Puente, maybe even uh, seasons, season one, two, three, four. There's so many aspects of his career and his life. But it looks like this year is going to be the year where we are going to be putting out possibly a documentary first on his life and his legacy, and then, of course, a beautiful story on his life. So um, finally, knock on wood, and but it looks like it will be happening uh, sooner, th later this year uh, into 2020. Oh, I look forward to that. And again, I'm just so happy that you're safe, that your family's doing well um, in Florida, but representing New York. <laughs> yeah, all the way, man. Love New York. And a uh, big shout out to all the first responders in New York. New York's got hit really hard. My family is safe in New York. I love you, Mom, Audrey, Ronnie, my whole family. So everybody's in quarantine. So, um, But uh, again, respect to the, F, the, the New York Fire Department, the NYPD, and of course, our first responders all the doctors and nurses in New York and the whole tri-state area and around the United States too. They, they're doing a fantastic job keeping everybody safe. And uh, let's go science, man. It's all about science right now. Prayer and science. And I hopefully these scientists uh, uh, can find some sort of vaccine that we can all uh, get real soon and uh, we can all come at it. In the meantime, music will help you. I promise you music is the best remedy for any depression or any thoughts that you might have being in quarantine or even if you're not feeling so hot um and you're just feeling down music is the best remedy and i promise you that if you listen to a tito puente record any of them from the 1950s and 60s all the way to this passing in 2000 you will enjoy your day and it'll go by much brighter can i give you a little music oh, please. Yeah, thing on top of that <laughs> with the old man on it <laughs> Pretty cool. Oye, como da, mi ritmo de no pa' gozar, ¿tú qué? Mulata, que viva Tito Puente. Tito, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Much love. I love you, Mabel. God bless you. Stay safe, everybody. All right? Viva Tito Puente. Take care. Bye, <laughs> uh, yeah.